No problem. Bambam Sefer Hamizvot, positive commandments, Mizvot Aser. We're up to Mizvah Nunhe number 55. The last three Mizvot that we learned were the Mizvot of associated with the Shalosh Regalim, three holidays, Pesach, Shavuot, and Sukkot. The three obligations that we have, and two of them are combined with other Mizvot, meaning the Mizvah of making the pilgrimage and going to Yerushalayim is combined with the first Korban obligation, Korban Hagiga, Shalmei Hagiga. Second Mizvah is called Korban Olat Ri'iyah, the burnt offering of appearance when it went appearing. And the third, which is the third Korban, which is Shalmei Samhaz, associated in general, Samahta Behagecha, with all the other joy, joyful and joyous obligations of the holiday, including uh, regarding consumption, eating, and gifts, and uh, making the family happy. So, Mizvah Nunha, as we mentioned yesterday, we're now going to go into, in the next handful of Mizvot, those associated, those Korbanot Bet HaMikdash activities associated with the holiday of Pesach, which, um, of course, is nice and timely and apropos for right now. Here we go. Mizvah Nunha, Hishi Sivanu, Lishchot Se HaPesach, Torah commanded us to slaughter a sheep and could also be a goat. Um, the uh, Rambam using the terminology of the Torah uh, for the Korban Pesach on the 14th day of Nisan, which is the equivalent of Eid Pesach, because Pesach is the night of the 15th, Ben Ha'arbaim in the afternoon, meaning after Hasot, is the time after midday is the time for slaughtering and offering this korban. As Ramba will explain, this is one of the very, very few exceptions and positive commandments in Mizbot Aseh, the one who violates and does not offer this korban in its proper time, man or woman will be liable for karet the serious, very serious punishment that is a uh, an effect on your on your life, both and or your your physical current life or your afterlife, and obviously very very serious. It's associated with with, with death penalties, and even though this is a positive commandment, which normally carries with it no physical punishment at all, out of the two hundred and forty eight, as he will explain. We'll find it by so the Gemara speaks uh, and informs us of two unique aspects to Kurban Pesach, the first, right? Because the second, Pesach Shini, is a different Mizvah, which we'll discuss, comes a month later. Pesach, the first Kurban Pesach, in other words, the timely and intended Kurban Pesach, two exceptions. One, it's an obligation for women. Two, it overrides Shabbat. Kilomar. Meaning, if the 14th falls out on uh, Shabbat, and Moshe Shabbat is the holiday, you still bring the Korban on the 14th and slaughter. It's a violation of Shabbat. The Torah tells you to, however, violate Shabbat, slaughter the Korban, and prepare it on the 14th um, uh, without moving that obligation aside and changing the time. How do we know the punishment is karet? It says, someone who's around, who's not tameh, he's tahor, and he refrains and fails to fulfill this misfah. The Torah says explicitly, he receives karet. In the beginning of the, of, of the Gemara, Masechet Keritot, They list there in the Gemara the Mizvot that you'll be liable for their desecration, their violation, the punishment of Karet. They're almost all Lot Amar, Uniquely, Gemara there explains, based on the Torah, that Torah Shabbat that Chorban Pesach and Brit Milah, the violation of those, 
And the just simple refrain uh, of fulfilling those two mizvot is also a, a brings it with the punishment of, of, of karet. And those are the only two exceptions in mizvot aseh. <laughs> But we continue with other realms and aspects of the Mizvav Kodban Pesach, which are enumerated as separate independent Mizvav. Mizvav Nunvav number 56. To eat, the first one was to, was to slaughter the Kodban, which includes offering. Um, this is to eat the, the, the lamb that you brought for Korban Pes on the night of the 15th, which is the actual holiday, with the conditions set forth in the Torah. So the Rambam lists three conditions. One should be roasted over the fire, in other words, as opposed, as opposed to boiled or cooked should be eaten in one household only, and it should be eaten with masot and marot, masa marot. Vihumro, the source is, ve'ekhlu tabasa v'alayla hazeh siri eshu masot amirurim yochidu. The pasuk explicitly says, he eat the korban pesah with marot and masa. Now, the Rambam will spend the rest of the time explaining that the marot is not an independent misvah, but the korban pesah is. So here we go. You might ask and challenge me. Why would you take that pasuk and count it all as one mizvah? Seems like there's these three separate mizvot. Korban Pesah, eating it, eating masa, and eating marod. Now, as we will see, eating masa is a separate mizvah because it's a separate command. But Really, as you'll get to, is asking about Maror. Why is not an independent Mizvah? Ashibenu, I'll answer as follows. Umnam hiyot achilat masa Mizvah befne asma, hu emet, kimosh shani ati levayr. It's true that masa is an independent Mizvah, as we'll explain when it comes. Vichan achilat basat pesah Mizvah befne asma, kimosh zacharun. Obvious, as we're mentioning here, eating the flesh of the Korban pesah, independent Mizvah. The marod is drawn and attached to the mizvah eating korban pesa and is not independent. How do I know this? The proof. That korban pesa will be and can be fulfilled when you eat it, regardless of whether or not you are lucky enough to get a hold of Maror. Maror lo yachir ki im im basara pesah ki omro amirurim yachiru. However, Maror cannot be independently accomplished. It can only be accomplished being eaten with korban pesah, as the pasuk says, al merorim yachiru. So that shows you of a Maror beli basar lo asakilu v'loni emar kivar ki yemes va'ahat. Then you have Maror on its own, and don't have Qurban Pesah, it isn't like, oh, at least I had Maror, and I was able to fill, fulfill something. No, you fulfilled nothing, not even one Mizvah. So his, his proof is simply that we know from the Pesukim and Torah Shabbat, factually speaking, that Maror Pesah can be fulfilled on its own if need be, but Maror cannot. It shows you it's not independent. V'lashon Mechilta, the Midrash explains, on the pasuk siri esh umasot amirurim yochiduhu, Magi, this pasuk teaches us, simizvata pesah sali, masa umaror. Kilomar sham mizva hi kibus ele, that the mizva of Kurban pesah is gathering together roasted meat, masa umaror. Visham amru, in the same midrash they ask rhetorically, minayna taumed, she en lahem, she im en lahem maror, masa umaror. How do you know that if I don't have Masa Maror, I can still independently fulfill the Mizvab Korban, Eden Korban Pesah? The Mulamad, the Pasuk says, Yocheluhu. It added that word. Kilomar habasar levador. If need be, eat the flesh of the Korban Pesah on its own. 
Yachol en lahem pesa lo yisu yidei chavotav masal maror. And what if you don't have korban pesa? You shouldn't fulfill the masal maror. Hare at dan. Well, let's um, judge this through legal means. Ho'il va pesa mas mizvat ase umasal maror mizvat ase. Right, they each seem to be a positive commandment. Halam adata shim en lahem masal maror. You see him be pesa. And we just learned that I can do Pesach independently. Kach en lan Pesach, yes, uben Masal Marot. I may then also think that I can also fulfill Masal Marot separately. That's what the Pasuk in the Torah comes to say and add on afterwards. Umasot umranim yocheluhu, eat it, which means I give you permission to eat that independently, but not to eat them independently. Now, again, that means that if I eat them, um, I'm not doing a separate misvah of maror, but the masa, as we're going to see, is an independent misvah. V'sham amru in the same midrash, yocheluhu, look how many things we're learning from yocheluhu. Mikan she'a pesah ne'echal al ha-soba. Ven ha-masa o maror ne'echal al ha-soba. So what you also learn from the word eat it, that korban pesah must be fulfilled and eaten when you are already somewhat satiated, as opposed to masa maror, which do not have that requirement. The fish shaikar ha mizba achilat ha basar kimosha amar ve ichlut ha basar balal haze ve hamarod nechrar ahar achilat basar. Because again, the essential mizba is eating the meat, and the marod is just an extension of and drawn in with this mizba. The hayuban kimosha hit ba'ed me kituvim elu, the mishi avina. And again, the obligation could be derived and understood simply from the reading of the Pesukim. The most glaring proof is he has shorish hanikhtah b'talmud. Who Amra, my second Pesachim, it says, Maror bizman hazeh derabanan. In these days, Mizvah Maror, unfortunately, is only rabbinical Mizvah. The Gemara says this explicitly. Ki mina Torah en choval v'achlo b'fna asmo, because from the Torah standard, eating it independently is not a mezvah, only with Qurban Pesach. It's a clear proof. So this is an example of a mezvah that does not have an independent life and only uh, lives through another mezvah. The rest of the Mizvah of Qurban Pesah. In fact, I can say that perhaps the majority of the Masech Pesahim deals with Qurban Pesah and partly with the Mizvah of eating Qurban Pesah. Okay, well, we have more discussion on the Mizvah relevant to Qurban Pesah coming up. We'll stop here. Amen. 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 Amen.